finally Friday, guys. Finally. Has it been a week for y'all? It has been. Yeah. We've had a little girl that's decided to be sick, so uh -oh. we've been trying to get her better. I reckon that's going around with everybody. Man. I don't know. She's been to, what, three or four different appointments? And has one again today. Trying to get her numbers right, so we'll get her there eventually. There you go. Well, it's looks like y'all uh, moved some stuff around or something, haven't you? We've or... sold uh, a couple of our bigger sets, so we've had to move some stuff around. Um, overall, it's been a pretty good week. Cool. Uh, I mean, we haven't sold a card or a toolbox this week, but you can't do that every week. So. <laughs> That's rare for you not to sell one at least one every two weeks or so. Well, you know, we, you got to fill them up sometimes. So toolbox selling machines here. We uh, we try to sell as many as we can, and then we try to fill them up also. So there you go. Well, what cool new stuff you got this time? We have actually been showing. Um, you know, we showed the uh, round prevention uh, hex sockets. Oh there. yeah, yeah. So we've actually been showing everybody the. They've actually come out with a socket extractor kit now, that I think is pretty cool. Yeah, it works really good too. So it's got a unique design on it. When I first looked at them, I didn't know how well they were going to work because of the way the design is here. But they actually seem to use the same technology that they use on those to where it pulls it in instead of kind of pushing it out mm -hmm. so it gets a really good bite but the really cool feature on these is on all your other extractors either they come with something to knock the the bolt out once you know you get it or the stud whatever you take out um or they don't some do yeah. some don't and you're always That's the hardest part is yeah. getting it out of there so yeah. you're always walking over to a vice or trying to beat mm -hmm. it out however you're trying to do it this one here actually has the screw that goes through the center. So you actually just stick it in there and it drives it out. Uh, I think that's really neat uh, just for the fact that you never you never walk away from your toolbox, you're just right there. Right. Plus you got a good control. Um, whereas on the other one, you gotta knock it out. Um, sometimes that pin will bend, and once that pin bends, well now it's not straight, so you, mm -hmm. you know it just causes, uh, all kind of good good words to come out sometimes anyway well one of the things people forget is the reason why a bolt stripped is because it's tight right or right. it's not moving yep. it's not just because hey that bolt decided to round off so you know you've all been in that situation where you have to go a little right a little loose you know back and forth to try to get it out without breaking the bolt itself off but sometimes you have to put heat on it right so the cool thing about those is, <clears throat> you know, if you need to take your extractor off to add heat to it, all you gotta do is thread that rod down there, pull the extractor off, throw a little heat on it, beat it back on, and well, and, and what you see with the other ones too, when you're trying to do that, when you when you finally do get a good bite, and then you realize crap, you know, I I, I now I've got to take this socket off. Well, now yeah. you're you're backing up on all that progress. Mm -hmm. Now you're having to go down another size, and it's just back and forth, back and forth. And they, and they have several different sizes. Um, they have uh, a, a good variety of kits. Um, this one here is the quarter inch, uh, and it comes with two different size, because when you get down to the smaller ones. Right. Um, now, it, something that I've never really thought about with an extractor um, is it has on their box here that it will even get out the, the grease nipples and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big thing just because uh especially on what i can see on like a brake bleeder or something yeah normally when those things are rounded you're trying to take vice grips or whatever tighten it down as tight as you can uh and it just usually just doesn't go very well um <laughs> like but it, it just crumbles underneath it right and, and normally you know you, you get it out um but as far as uh, the button screws that they show getting out here, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Normally yeah. you're taking and cutting the head off of those and, mm, <laughs> and then trying to get out. it out. So um, lug nuts, just all kind of different capabilities here. I think it's cool that they've made a design to where they can do that, but you can also get it out, like you said, with these, so mm. we can push it off. 
which I had a lot of, you know, I did a video on those and a lot of guys were like, well, I got bolt biters that are the same thing. No, they're not. Like bolt biters specifically, they do not hammer them on, you know, because they're thinner walled and they will bust. And the twist design, like if you have to, if you got a broken stud that's, you know, maybe a quarter inch, half inch sticking out of the, you know, the top that you need to get a hold of, you know, the bolt biters, they don't, they don't work like those, like those designed to go on. And if you got a longer stud that you may need to reuse, you can actually reuse it with those because it don't mess the threads up, you know. Right. It does leave little marks going down it, but the, you know, you can thread a nut right back on that. It's no big deal. So. Yeah. Well, I can tell you from, with selling the, uh, the hex, everybody's like, well, I, I've got Allen's already. Mm-hmm. How many times have you rounded a bolt with your Allens? Yeah. And, and, and you know, it, it's always, well, the last person that worked on it did this. And I agree, that happens a mm -hmm. lot. Um, but the good thing about that is um, those can replace the your good ones in your box right now. Yeah. And you won't have that issue. You won't have to go back and forth. A company that takes the time to study a tool that's already out, that you think is perfected. I yep. mean, you would have thought Allen was done. Like, mm -hmm. okay, they've got the ball style, they've got the regular style, they've got the tall, they've got the short, they're done. Right. No, 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 they come out. So I have no doubt, I don't have the um, bolt biters in my toolbox at home. I have extraction kits and stuff like that, but I can tell you that if a company will go to that much depth, looking at those, they did the exact same thing here. Oh yeah. Um, it may not seem like a lot that they thought, you know, of putting a threaded screw to push mm -hmm. it out. You may say, well, that's that's nothing. No, that means that they've really sat down and they've looked <laughs> at every everything. aspect. Well, um, well I, I can say this without a doubt with those. I mean, if it's a rounded, threaded stud that you can take out, that's 100% round. You can't get any more perfectly round than that, right? Yep. So they take off 100% rounded, but I can tell you this, if you drive it on there, it, two things will happen. It's coming out or it's breaking off. That's right. your options. Well, and most of your extractors, they they push the material away. Yeah. Whereas these are grabbing it and pulling it in. Mm -hmm. uh, and like I've told people on these, with, when you do that, you're starting to clog that socket up, which means it's going to grab. It don't have that slippage anymore. Right. And if you've ever looked at your nipics, when you start to turn something that's stripped on them, they basically do the same thing with the way their their jaws are reversed. When you mm -hmm. start to do that, it pushes all that material. And it just it gets tighter and tighter yeah. so that's what these are going to do now obviously you don't want to have to use extractors every day um if you do it, you probably it's say bad, yeah, you got a bad job bad job but <laughs> um it's nice to have it's like a tap and die set you yeah. know um, to have something that i actually work to me is is what keeps you in the business because if mm -hmm. you don't have a tap and die set and you're <laughs> you're having to try to rethread with just a regular bolt, you're, you're probably not going to be in much longer. So between so, those, uh, the several kits that they got here, they're going to have what you need to take care of it. Um, of course, now, Mako doesn't cover these right now, so not every Mako truck's going to have them. Uh, but I've always said if, if it's a good tool, I'm going to look at it. So right, sure. I've been showing all my customers. We've had a lot of good interest in these, and, and I think they're going to do well. Well, I feel like when when Mac launched these, the you know under the RBRT line, I feel like that they just <clears throat> they kind of missed the point with them, you know, because they pretty much sold them as a hex extractor instead of use it right before you get in a bind, right? Like it's always it's always better to keep it from rounding than it is to try to get it out once you've done rounded it off so right i i agree um i think that's why that demo block there was so vital on selling the ones that we had mm -hmm. um, because i could show them on a perfectly good yeah allen and then the rounded there was no play in either mm -hmm. one of them so they're take those fasteners out don't round them However, this neat new patented technology will allow you to take a damaged fastener out and put up to 400% more torque on that fastener than a conventional hex design. That's right guys, you heard me right, up to 400% more torque on a damaged fastener. 
So it is to be used as your primary tool. It is the next generation design that you're going to use every day in the shops to prevent, but it will also remove damaged fasteners. So I've got uh, a demo block here. And in the demo block, I've got a good hex fastener and I've got one that's been drill rounded out. I've got a conventional hex tool design here to show you, you know what? It fits in the good one and it will crack it loose like it should and tighten it back down because that's a good fastener in good shape and that's a standard hex design. Put it into the drill rounded one, however, and this is what we get. There is absolutely no chance that that tool is going to remove that fastener. Okay? We'll swap over to the RPT bit to show you that the RPT bit is not oversized. There's no smoke and mirrors. It actually fits into the standard one just fine and we'll crack them loose and tighten them back down just like any other hex design. But you come across one that's been rounded, fit that RPT down in the bottom of that fastener and I can crack them loose and tighten them back down again. No trouble whatsoever. RPT is the newest design in bit socket technology that will prevent you from rounding out fasteners, but you come across those ones that have been stripped rounded by somebody else or age and time and rust corrosion, RPT is absolutely your best fighting chance of getting it out. They get down in the bottom of those fasteners, lock in tight. Therefore, it's not aggressive enough to mess up a new one, but yeah. it's also aggressive enough to get out the old one. Um, I'm kind of interested on these to see um, I don't know what these would do to a good. Um, um, they've got videos on on there. Like it will put like on the sides of the bolt. It'll put that little line. Yeah. On it, but it doesn't. It doesn't deform the. So. You know, the, I think the that would be something big too. Because if you if you had these in in the everyday world now mm -hmm. I don't I don't know in, in the body shop world when you're you know you're going back over painted bolts and stuff like that that might be something right. but. Your everyday world that might be a good reason just to have these is you mm. could use them well like if you knew you had something that hey i can't round that off yeah. if i do it's going to be really bad you know and there's certain situations that you know that's going to happen and obviously it's a pain because you have to take the little pusher rod you know and get your socket back off your bolt once you get it out but like that's still better than yeah the alternative <laughs> you know of rounding it off but yeah well you know i saw um on our extractor wrenches and stuff like that that we that we had uh, or have um, they were good like that too but um, as far as a socket you never really had anything you're not sure. going to use a regular extractor right. on anything mm -hmm. um, and that, that's just well them having the ability to work in both directions is is nice too because yep. especially if you're working out in the field and you got the option of hey i gotta down this piece of equipment or i can put this stripped headed bolt back in it right and keep the equipment moving you know like and a lot of people won't understand that mm -hmm. people that have never turned wrenches yeah and and people that's never been in that that situation will argue and say no you do the job right you leave you go get there sometimes that's not oh, yeah. an option um well i mean like a perfect example is a trucking company right like yeah. if, if your truck's down on the side of the road and you know you got to get it back going at least to get it to a shop or Yep. you know continue the route till you get him home i'd hate rather a road mechanic put a stripped headed bolt back in it to get that piece of equipment home than down in it and it costing you a couple thousand dollars a day yep or like people that work in the logging industry they're out in the middle of nowhere working it ain't like they can run across the street to o'reilly's and hope they got a you know some crazy metric threaded bolt to you know keep their oil lines or yeah. whatever going on in things, well, you know? and your your maintenance and and several factories and stuff like that it's mm. the same way you know when you're when you're losing so many dollars an hour yeah um, we we have a place that that we go to and when they're down they're leaving they're losing over a hundred thousand dollars a minute Holy so smokes. they refuse to be down so mm -hmm. um i don't think that i would care for a maintenance guy to just screw Heck in that no. until we can get a new one here you mm -hmm. know um because like where we live unfortunately you can't you don't have access to like a lot of bolts and stuff you know like you'd have to drive to tupelo and go to one of the specialty bolt places or whatever you know it's well, good to and, have that option and the last couple of years um 
you, your hands have been tied even more mm -hmm. because now it seems like when you run out of something, it takes forever to, to get it back. So um, that's true. You, you run to AutoZone, O'Reilly's, Napa, wherever you're running, and they don't have it. It may be three weeks for you to get yep. it. And if, like you said, if truck truck drivers trying to get home, uh, even out in the field, if somebody's mm -hmm. trying to get a crop in or something like that. Exactly. We gotta, get it, we gotta get it done. I've seen some pretty, um, pretty off the wall fixes just to get the yeah, job done. Yeah, you have to. You know, you know, it's but, better than <laughs> better than a lot of stuff that you would have to resort to if you didn't have a way to kind of patch it up to get it back. So. Yeah, yeah. But you know, like I said, a lot of people won't understand that. But if you if you've worked mm -hmm. real long in the mechanic world, you you probably definitely understand it. And, mm, true. All right. Well, guys, there you go. If you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up. Check over for merchandise, cool tools, and discount codes down here. If you're not subscribed, you take your finger and click that button. It's that easy. Y'all have a great weekend. See ya.